In cricket, every single thing has a technical aspect to it. And there are many variables outside of cricket that decide how the game will be played or how differently this match will be played than the previous one or the next one. Cricket is also one of the few sports where a set of players look after the ball during the match in order to maintain the shine as much as possible. Talking about balls, did you know that the Duke Soda is actually named after the famous English cricket ball manufacturing company? A fellow Babaji, Dinshawji, Kuvarji, Pandol, many thousands of years ago, who was a cricketer himself, named his company after the ball company in 1899. That's right. That was your Parsi IDFC first fact of the week. Now let's take a look at the evolution of the cricket ball. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Century of Cricket Podcast. I'm on the treadmill. It's brought to you by IDFC First Bank and in this episode we will look at the evolution and importance of the cricket ball. Cricket was invented as a game by some bored shepherds when one shepherd threw a ball-like object towards the other shepherd who had to defend it from hitting the stool behind him. And that's how they lost all the sheep because they weren't paying attention. The wolves ate the sheep and they were playing the silly game of cricket. In fact, that was the version of test cricket. It went on for 10 days, all the sheep were gone. Okay, I'm not sure I'm making up all this, but the shepherd part is true. But the modern ball's journey began in 1775 when Duke and Sons received a royal patent from King George VI. And the ball was ultimately used in a match for the first time in 1780. And from there on, Duke's cricket balls were used for test matches, top-level first-class cricket and other premier leagues in England. Also, angry wives who throw it at people coming late from the pub, but that's not really sport. During the outbreak of the Second World War, Duke and Son failed to hold, uh, let me make that clear, failed to hold on to their market outside of the UK and a company called Kookaburra from Australia swooped in, hit a contract from the Australian Cricket Board and they started to manufacture cricket balls. Then came Sanspirel's Greenlands in India, which are balls specifically used only in India for test matches, They're called the SG balls. But which of these companies do our cricketers prefer? I don't have a lot of knowledge, but I know Duke is handmade in England. Kukabura is all machine made and SG is the Indian bat. But yeah, for me, favorite ball to bowl with is the Jai Hin! Ham honge kamiyabekadin! It's SG! Okay, now let's talk about different kinds of balls, the different specific types of balls, cricket balls, which are used in different kinds of situations. We'll start with the OG, the original, the red ball. I sort of have one here. I don't know if you can see it. Here it is. It's red when it starts, it's not so red when it ends. Red balls were the first kind of cricket balls that were used in test matches as well as other kinds of competitive cricket. Then in 1977, with the introduction of day-night cricket, the white balls were introduced to the sport. Hang in there. Tang tang! There you go. Now the major issue with using the red ball during night matches was its visibility. Many players faced a lot of problems and the red ball became a nightmare for them to play with. But funnily enough, the origin of the white ball actually stems from a rebel league in Australia, which happened in 1977. We're talking about Kerry Packers World Series Cricket, which asked Kukabura to make a ball for them which would be visible under lights. And because Kukabura had experience of creating white balls for other sports like hockey, they immediately got to work. After the WSC, ODIs in Australia became coloured clothing and the news of white balls reached soon enough to New Zealand, so did Kukabura's popularity. And then in 1992, Kukabura's white ball were used for the first time in a World Cup which was hosted by Australia and New Zealand and which Pakistan won. And then the final evolution, I shouldn't say final, the next evolution in the world of cricket balls came in the form of not yellow, not green, but a pink ball. So there we have it, the colours of a rainbow, all on a cricket field. With the introduction of T20 cricket in the early 2000s, the white ball cricket started overpowering the traditional red ball cricket for the audience. Which is obvious because if you give the same person a choice between a three-hour match or a five-day long cricket match, most people would prefer getting free within three hours, right? Which is when the MCC decided to try out day-night tests which would allow more people to watch it. So the research team got to researching on how to make day-night tests work and the biggest hurdle was yet again, the ball. The ball needed to be changed as red was already proven to be a nightmare during night matches. So experiments took place with yellow, I kid you not, orange and then pink. And as is often the case, women's cricket got the jump on the men's game with the pink ball being trialled in an England vs Australia women's one day game in 2009. Then again in Jan of 2010, a first class match between Guyana and Trinidad Tobago was played with the pink ball. And finally, 
The first ever day-night test was played using the pink ball in Adelaide in November 2015. For now, the cricket world is still experimenting with the pink ball and that's the latest step in the evolution of the balls in cricket. Talking about evolution, a vital alert from IDFC First Bank about a scam which has been evolving in the recent past. What am I talking about? Social engineering attacks via impersonation. Scammers impersonate senior officials, urging uh, urgent action like transferring money or purchasing vouchers. Watch out for messages from unknown numbers, urgent requests for financial actions and intimidating behaviour. So please stay cautious, verify requests, never rush into actions, protect yourself from fraudsters. Stay safe. But that is the end of this episode of the Century of Cricket podcast brought to you by IDFC First Bank. I am Cyrus Brocha, you are Karan. Uh, that's your friend Raju. At least a couple of you are still there. I will see you all next week. Until then, pink is the colour she wore.